It is for certain that COVID will go down in the history books as the deadliest disease in American history to date. But a close second was the influenza outbreak of 1918, better known as the Spanish flu. Here to give us a bit of a history lesson and help us both draw some parallels and lessons from the last pandemic is Dr. John Kirkendall, Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and Professor of History at Charleston Southern University. It's so great to have you. Honor to be here. Someone as someone who has studied history, who has a, a very hearty academic understanding of the Spanish flu, when you heard that uh, COVID was being determined a pandemic, what went through your mind? The first question was how long will it last? Um, one of the challenges we have had, I think, is being a society two generations removed from epidemic disease as being a common thing. And in 1918, uh, things were very different. We had a, a society with much less advanced medicine and epidemics were much more frequent, uh, cholera and typhus, for example. So I wondered how we would cope with something that may not have a clear ending. Right. Uh, can you give us a brief history lesson on the Spanish flu and how it got its name? Um, certainly. The flu began in March of 1918, apparently not in Spain, but in an army base in the Midwest, the United States. America had mobilized for World War I. There were a lot of young men concentrated together in uh, barracks, and the flu began among our doughboys, our soldiers. Mm. Apparently, it was contained largely within the army bases in the spring of 1918, not the general civilian population. It went over to Europe with them on the troop ships, began to spread in Europe, not just among soldiers, but also among civilian populations, not only in France where the bulk of the fighting was going on, but broadly so that the flu spread down into Spain. Now in England and in France and in Belgium and in Germany, wartime censorship prevented the reporting of the flu even as it did in the United States. The first reports in the media came from neutral Spain, where there were no reasons not to talk about what was going on. And so people immediately identified this flu as originating in Spain, because that's where the news came. It came back across the ocean and uh, continued to spread around the world. And the war had a great deal to do with that. And can you remind us what the impact was on the United States when the pandemic became more, more present here in this country? Certainly. Uh, the, the first wave of the pandemic was very mild in the spring of 1918. But in August, it came back from Europe in a much more virulent strain, much more lethal. The bulk of the fatalities um, in the pandemic we're in that autumn of 1918, from August to November. The uh, population largely affected were young people between 25 and 34. Perhaps um, one out of every hundred who got the pandemic died of it in that age group. It was more lethal than the First World War was for America. Overall, uh, about 550,000 Americans would die wow. from the pandemic. This is out of a national population of just over 100 million. Mm -hmm. So a significant impact in that day. What point did we start to see the numbers scaling back? And when was it declared that it was over? Did they know that it was over? People realized that the second wave of the pandemic was fading by Christmas time in 1918. A third wave came in the spring of 1919, but by April that too had faded. It was much less lethal. And the assumption was in the summer of 1919, everything is over. The media in the United States actually celebrates return to normal. And the, the late summer, early autumn of 1919 is World War I is all, has ended and we're having the peace treaties being signed and things like this. And then everybody was surprised. Right. In December of 1919, when a fourth wave of the pandemic hit mm. and lasted till April of 1920, 
that turned out to be the final wave, but not because of any precautions, because the pandemic itself, the disease itself mutated to become much less lethal. Oh, interesting. So it sounds like there may have been some super spreader events that were taking place. There wasn't a whole lot of understanding of hygiene and ways of protecting one another, even though we have seen some pictures of people wearing masks uh, as they do today. Really no different in terms of that kind of technology. It's really fascinating. Uh, any last parting uh, bits of information that you want the viewers to know about the Spanish flu and its parallels to COVID? I think the the single biggest takeaway is to take it seriously. Uh, people in 1918 didn't think this was going to be a big deal, and it turned out to be very big indeed. Yeah. Um, local governments tried the very same things we've had, masking and social distancing and even canceling large gatherings, and then went pulled back from that when they thought it was all over. Right. And we're surprised, as you say, sort of super spreader events at the end of 1919 that lead to another way. Just have to be patient. But uh, even as history echoes right. itself, we also can learn Absolutely. from history and Absolutely. learn that the Republic survives. Indeed it does. Doctor, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Pleased to be with you all. Appreciate that. We're back after this.